Admiral's log. It would appear that some of my captains and their crews have gotten a little overconfident. Today we've seen the return of five of our destroyers to their respective ports. Well, limping back to their ports would be a more suitable term. How did this come to be? The convoy raid started out very well. We had eight ships, two light cruisers and five destroyers under the command of the heavy cruiser Fiat. The enemy only had five ships guarding their convoy. This was two light cruisers and three destroyers. The mission was simple. Eliminate the convoy escorts and then destroy the convoy itself. What happened instead was an amount of bravado that I certainly did not expect from my captains. Our formation quickly scattered, ships started attacking ships at random, and due to communication breakdowns, ships did not warn each other about incoming torpedoes. This ultimately led to the loss of the light cruiser Alpha Romeo. All destroyers took light to medium levels of damage and even the heavy cruiser took light damage. This should have been an easy victory, but it turned into a Pyrrhic one. I've sent out a communique to all my captains stating that while the war is going well, the enemy is far from defeated. Vigilance and discipline have to be maintained at all times. Failure to do so means that ships sink, fathers don't return to their children, and the fleet weakens overall. I am hopeful that this sharply worded communique will restore order to my fleet, if not then I will have to make an example of the next captain that steps out of line. Hey guys, still here and welcome back to the Italian campaign. It's episode 7 and as I discussed at the end of episode 6, I'm going to need a new battlecruiser. What I have currently is a fleet that's pretty capable of dealing with most of the enemy targets. They still, however, have quite a lot of battleships and battle cruisers. So I might commission one battleship if that is required. I'm not sure yet because I think my destroyers with the torpedoes could be asked to deal with those battleships and same for the battle cruisers with their 18 inch guns. The battle cruisers aren't that big of a threat, but I don't really feel like my battle cruisers can deal that well with their heavy cruisers. So time to design a new ship. Um, it might be a bit of an exercise in futility, I'm not sure yet. It's going to depend on how quickly we can get this thing built. Now, let's have a look. Uh, it's going to be one of those sleek battleships, sorry, battle cruisers. It's going to be a relatively small battle cruiser. And um, it's going to be doing 40 knots, much like the other ships like her. Better oil. Um, Turbo electric drive is so fun to use, but it immediately blooms your ship from 226 to 415. That's incredibly expensive. And I think gear turbines or gas turbines are sufficient. See, this pushes your weight down from 25,000 tons to 22,000 tons because you're running at high speeds. That's what these gas turbines are for. The problem is trying to get enough funnels on the ship. So I'm just going to go with the fairly safe uh, funnels, or sorry, fairly safe gear turbines. And I can even reduce it more by lowering the draft to minus 15%. And then I have a 159 million ship. If I go for gas turbines now, it's 196, so it's still within budget. Standard crew quarters, maximum bulkheads, as per the usual. This thing is going to be designed to take on heavy cruisers. That is her objective. Heavy cruisers. Um, I think I'm gonna have to run with a smaller secondary tower. Holy moly, that thing is enormous. It's a nice looking tower, I'll give you that. What can you put on there, fives? No, four? Yeah, you can put fours on all those slots. Which is nice, but not sufficient when you're dealing with a heavy cruiser. We're gonna need something a little bigger. Um, although for the... Well, for the type of armament that I want to put on a ship, I'm going to need something smaller in the sense of a small secondary tower, like that. Engine efficiency, let's go with a mega funnel. And we're going to put... Yeah, see? 39% engine efficiency. If I go for gear turbines, it's going to be fairly easy, because then I can force the boilers, and I'm at 94%. That's a lot better. Smoke interference. Some people keep asking me for checking smoke interference. Right now it's giving me minus 5% base accuracy. It's not bad. If I go for a balanced boiler, uh, smoke interference is less. It's just none. 
But minus 5% base accuracy, I think I can live with. Alternatively, if I put two relatively smaller funnels on there... Yeah, that's worse. Rather have one big funnel that doesn't get as much smoke interference than two of these. Because, of course, this is 168 and this is 260s with the base stats. So, fourth boiler, 94% engine efficiency, I can live with that. Now, I don't have a lot of displacement left to put um, a lot of tonnage on. I am going to invest in having these things steer faster. Because they're going to be operating relatively closer to the enemy heavy cruisers. At least that's the plan. Uh, generation 2 radar rangefinder. I might need to make these slings slightly slower than the other heavy cruisers. Because at this rate, this is going to get problematic. Unless... Saves me 3,000 tons. Uh, diesels get less engine efficiency. Doesn't really matter. Uh, if I reduce the draft a bit less. Hmm. Is there any other hull I could use for this? Like the modern Battle Cruiser 2. That might actually be more feasible. Scratch the Sanita. We're going to do something different. This design is pretty long. Meaning that you have a terrible turning circle. 1600 meters. You can still boost that if you want to. I mean, I could reduce the beam. Increasing the beam is just going to give me a lot more space. But I don't think I need that much. Um... Ideally 40 knots. Ship is currently not that expensive because her hull form is probably better. 109. Yeah, this is 80 hull form. What is my actual hull form? It's 141. It's because of the draft, I think. And if you reduce this even more... No, your hull form is not going to change. Interestingly, your floatability doesn't change either. If I have a bigger beam. So essentially if I have a wider ship. Anyway. Um, that's a colossal tower you got there. Light advanced tower 3. I think. It's a nice looking tower. But I'm going to go for this. It has 26 long range accuracy. This is 32. Your communications range is better. Which is nice. But not that important. No. We're going to go for this. Because then I might still be able to make one of those sleek battle cruisers, which substantially reduces their price. And a long range accuracy tower. No, it's too wide. Here. Alright, Krupp. Gear turbines. Gas turbines? 77 million, it's not that expensive. What about turbos? Ah. Huh. You have me interested. So we're going 95 million or 67 million. I can I can do 95 million. That's fine. Because this will allow the ship to slow down very quickly. Plus 75% decel. Force boilers. We are going to have to put at least a big funnel on there. Probably two. My smoke interference is going to be a bit worse than on the previous design. So be it. Yeah, 19% base accuracy less. That is pretty shit. Um, if I go for balanced boilers, 4.8. If I go for two mediums, get 91. 94. Smoke interference, minus 2.5. That's doable. Electric steering, unbalanced rudder, turning circle 1300 meters still. Yeah, this thing is not going to rely on turning very quickly in order to get out of dodge. I mean, it simply won't be able to do that. All the anti-flood, good citadel. I would like a generation two rangefinder and coincidence rangefinder. There is some discussion going on whether the rangefinder coincidence type or stereoscopic is better. This gives you faster gun aiming speed and more long range accuracy. This is uh, more gun aiming speed by 35%, so almost double and just 10% flat gun base accuracy. So that means that you're more likely to hit standard, if you will. 
Um, I would like to get very good sonar on these because these heavy cruisers of theirs are generally no joke. And when it comes to guns, I can go with the 18 inchers, which is fun, but not necessarily what I need. Because I'm hunting heavy cruisers, you see. And if you're hunting heavy cruisers, their engine efficiency 100, smoke interference, none. Um, if you're hunting heavy cruisers, then that means that you're going to need something that potentially fires a bit faster. Maybe 15 inch guns would be sufficient to do the job. Upgrade survivability. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. 18 inches are fun to use though. They're just so heavy. They're going to really mess with my pitch. I'm concerned. Big. Can I put torpedo launchers on the stern? Yes. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put torpedo launchers there. The way that this deck is built always reminds me like it's a ginormous Graf Spee or something to that effect. Hold on. If I'm able to put another barbette here, I can put another big turret up there and still have the entirety of my torpedo armament. Maybe. Let's go with the design. I am hunting heavy cruisers. I don't... Meh. See, I want to use these. I really do. Like a triple ABX format. That would give me quite a lot of firepower. Sit. No. I need to make a bit more room. No, I need the turret, not the barbette. Thank you. There. Pitch is 29. It gives me a turret which is way too tall here and if I just put that turret on the deck it's probably not, not going to be that much better now your pitch is still 28 that's my concern your pitch is too much okay if I do not go for the huge one but the enlarged superimposed barbette and we don't run the 18 inches um mm -mm 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 -mm. 15s. Like just triple 15s. That keeps the pitch much more under control. I might even be able to make the ship smaller because the Lepanto currently is quite large. And that means that she might take a bit more fire than I would like. Let's go with an increased complement of shells. I got the best auto loader. I want to get 24 inch torpedoes. Um. For balance, this is not going to give you a lot of range. It's just 13-2. That means if a battleship opens up, I'm going to have a problem, to say the least. What sort of shells are we going to be firing? TNTs, 2 powder, 3. We're fighting heavy cruisers. That's the ship's designed task. Doesn't mean that that's the ideal task. Currently, semi-armor piercing shells will at let's say 10 to 12,000 meters do 14 to 15 inches. I'm going to do a bit better semi ballistic. It gives me yeah, about 20 inches of armor pen. That's good. With these guns, I can fire every 40 seconds. So that will allow me to set fires if I go for incendiary shells. The question is, is that good enough? I'm thinking I'm fighting a battleship, but this is not designed to fight battleships. So the reasoning would be, if I encounter a battleship, I just pop torps and I run off. That's essentially how that's going to go. Just pop torps and run off. Um, she's a bit bow heavy now. Pull this back. Pull this back and pull this back. Okay, I do want some secondaries, because as we have seen in episode 6, 5, episode 5, it's entirely likely that you do, at some point, even though you don't want to, come up against enemy smaller ships, destroyers. If I upgrade the beam... No, that blooms the price of the ship substantially. I don't like that. Turning circle is still 1,000 meters. Whatever. 1500, it's fine. 
I can slow down pretty quick. That's the big issue. I can slow down pretty quick. And I got that high-end sonar. Electrical turrets. How's my armor? Six inch fore belt, six inch aft belt would be nice. 20 inch turret armor, a bit more superstructure armor. Uh, gives me a little bit to still put on some four inch guns. Let's see, can I house another one here? Yes. Their secondary armament is limited. But she can fling 15 24 inch torpedoes off her port and her starboard side, allowing her a far bigger blow than what the enemy might be expecting. At least that's the plan. And these are sneaky torps, although they are fairly big. So the visibility is only minus 33, meaning that they're more likely to get detected. But then again, I don't want to close to 12 kilometer range with a ship this expensive and this fragile, so I'm not going to do that. What else can I upgrade safely? Generation 2 to 3 is too big of an upgrade. Heavy shells is too big of an upgrade. I get a single hull bottom. Hmm. See, this does help with resistance and reducing torpedo damage. But I don't really want to sacrifice anything there. Nose fuse HE. Yeah, if that hits you, if you're in a destroyer, you're gonna be in trouble. To say the very least. 30 tons, conning tower. There. Just shy. Go on. There we go. Alright. Uh we already had the, the Fiat, we had the Alpha, we had the Lamborghini. I think it's time for another Ferrari, because that is the battle cruisers. Uh, so this is the Ferrari F2 would be a bit easy, would it not? Let's think of something else. How about the Ferrari Spider? Uh, 47,000. 47,000 for the amount of tons that the ship displaces. All right, save the design, and let's see how much one of these things is going to cost. Because it's probably going to be a lot. Gonna cost me eight million a month with the build time 22 months, a little under two years. It's probably gonna take me a while to get those things actually into action. Oh well. We still have a battle going on. A convoy, you see. It's the Regina reinforcing a convoy against the Light Cruiser Blitz and two destroyers. So once again, Regina gets to show what she can do against smaller ships. And I suspect that she's not going to have too many difficulties eliminating the targets. We're going to rush in at flank speed. The enemy's to the southeast, so we're going to have to just push through our own convoy. And make sure that we get those guys defended. We have radar return pings yet. To the south. Very good. All I had flank, 40 knots. Where is your convoy? Or rather, where's your task force? There, I just... <laughs> I just passed my own fleet. Okay, they spotted me. It means it's not going to take me too long to spot them as well. It's light stuff, so high explosive ought to do it. Uh, not for the secondaries. High explosive at this range can kill. Potentially in one shot. That's their light cruiser, and we have their destroyer group. I gotta make sure that they don't launch torpedoes. So the heavy cruiser, no, light cruiser is gonna have to take the first bit of attention from Regina. We're gonna slow down to about half, boosting my turning circle and making sure that I can dodge if I so desire, which I probably will, because as we have seen, these battle cruisers tend to attract some torpedoes. And are not great at dodging torpedoes. Not with that turning circle, anyway. Which is still far better than the uh, new Ferrari Spider class. Yeah, one gonna hit. Oh! Okay. That will do it. Just look at the massive hole. That was the high explosive hit. 
Oh boy. One shot, one kill. No, that's not true. It was more like one hit, one kill. Alright. Would you guys like to join the fate of said ship? Oh, you just started torping me. On ship speed, 38. Okay. We've got sonar, 3, so I will see the torps coming. I remember that these guys have one salvo each. It's gonna miss. Regina doing some nice drifting there. Turret crew is wondering which way to turn in order to get the torpedoes in order to get the turrets back on target. But they seem to be having the right idea. Identification of the light cruiser has not really gone through, but we might be able to see it just before it sinks. The DD. Yeah, I think both DDs have run out of torpedoes by now. There she goes. That was the Blitz. Oh, poor thing. Well, a little bit. And there's the Sharpshoots D8 out of Torps. The secondaries on that. If you just dance around their torpedoes, the Regina can just shotgun you full on the face with an 18-inch shell. Four-inch guns assisting. I think that over the campaigns, this is one of my more successful... Battle cruiser types. They just do very well. Fire. That was another 18 inch hit. I'm surprised they have taken 4,000 damage and are still here. That's pretty impressive. I mean,. I'm firing extremely... Wow. Extremely big shells at them, but they don't really seem to care about that. The light cruiser at least got the message. Might have had... Yeah, it's an overpen. That's the problem. That was not an overpen. No, it was. It was just overpens for about 2200 damage. Um. Yeah, you're going to be next. You don't got torpedoes. My guns hopefully can rotate fast enough and load fast enough. Oh, especially if you're going to turn away from me. Are oh, you missed? One kilometer out. You missed. Oh, well. The four-inch guns might do it. Chance to pen me? None. Or, well, negligible anyway. Go on. Go on. Can I get this on camera? Boom. Thank you. It's a good shot. That looks pretty. Alright, is it going to be enough? And there goes the rest of the salvo. This is what you call microseconds from disaster. Because this is a destroyer. That's going to be rather unhappy rather soon. Watch. Dead. Rather unhappy rather soon. So that was another two of their destroyers and one of their light cruisers. Reducing their light attack fleet, if you will. Their, their small strike forces even more. Despite getting these wins, I do feel that they still have a pretty serious presence here. With a power projection of 17,000 as opposed to my 600. I know that there was a German fleet. They are going to head to the Western Mediterranean. There's five destroyers going back to the... back to Helgoland. Okay, maybe the French can deal with that. We got five CLs and one DD going back. And I believe the Germans also... had a battleship, but that I kicked that back to port. There's still two heavies and a DD. Uh, yeah, all of these are ready. I can just push these out. Off you go. Places to be and ships to see. The Strale can get out there. Let's see if the Strale can do some invading. A power projection going up? No. Now, the Regina is going to take a month to repair, because they always do. 
Fiat, 92%, should be fixed in a month or two in the, uh, the vendor door, I think similar. Let's go. Moving on to October. Now the Strale just left dock, just left port, and immediately finds herself up against the Styria, the Vorarlberg, and the Scharfschütze D53. I don't think this is a good fight, so I'm going to leave that and wait for a better opportunity. Speaking of a better opportunity, we got the Rosolino Pilo going up against the V21. That's one destroyer, and I should be able to take that out. I have taken down single destroyers before. Essentially, just got to outplay them a little bit. Rosolino Pilo is about to encounter the German destroyer. We have our four inch single turrets. We have our torpedo launchers, and I'm not exactly sure what the Germans have, because I'm familiar with the... Oh, okay. I'm familiar with the Austro-Hungarian boats. We got an interesting turret setup here, which is going to make the f firing of the Bravo, sorry, Bruno turret pretty difficult. Torpedo launcher's coming about, there's another quad on the stern. Not a quad, a, a four-incher. Yeah, I really do not want you going broadside. Slow down. Do a donut. Because exactly that. Uh oh. They just ran out of torpedoes. It's like the game is paying penance for the torpedo spam that was the British campaign. Uh, the German campaign, actually. Because now they don't have any torpedoes at all. Interesting. Well, it's not like they don't have any torpedoes at all. It's just that the torpedoes... They just ran out after one salvo. This guy's flooding. Turning circle 236. That's very good. We're going to come alongside-ish. Drop torps. And you are going to have a couple of holes in your non-existent hull. There you go. Damage, 3%. It's another 100 victory points or so. Yep, yeah, 166. Good. Very good. Okay then, what's up next? The Maria Teresa, one of our heavy cruisers, goes up against Tuln and Scharfschütze D50. Sure, keep reducing the amount of escorts and at some point our destroyers will actually be able to land torpedoes against our capital ships because they simply will not have any escorts left. Of course it's not quite that simple. Because more often than not, the AI continues to build new ships. And especially since the campaign is running on legendary difficulty. They probably are able to spawn, well, buy, more and more and more new ships. But here today is a trained crew. I'm going to hold off on the torpedoes. This is one of those light cruisers that still carries a fairly sizable armament of torpedoes. And 6-inch guns. See if the Maria Teresa has been upgraded. Uh, yes, she's firing capped semi sorry capped AP shells, as opposed to the semi armor piercing shells, which turned out to be not as good as I hoped. Blocked shell. This one is in smoke cover. <laughs> it's interesting that my heavy cruisers have a better secondary armament, or at least a larger caliber secondary armament than my battle cruisers. But then again, these things were mostly designed to hunt destroyers and light cruisers, so exactly what they were doing right now. The accuracy is leaving something a little short of the ship. Look at that. It's not there. I know it's in a smokescreen, but it's just not there. Torpedo launcher destroyed. Are you kidding? You hit me once? And the starboard torpedo launcher has been destroyed. Cool. This dispersion is still so bad. I don't trust you not to have dropped torpedoes on me by now. Light cruiser first, destroyer second. There's your torpedo salvo. Yeah, and they also have that single launcher that did cost me a light cruiser before. So I'm going to have to be pretty careful here. That's the single launchers. Again, don't trust it. Good chance to pen. Some over pen, but most of it seems to be partial or a standard pen. 
Haunting tower damaged. Sad thing that my starboard torpedo launcher has been destroyed. Would have been very useful now. Turn away. Because I don't want the Tulin suddenly turning and dropping another set of torpedoes on me. It's alright. I have armor. You don't have that much armor. Your chance to pen me is 12%. That's fine. There you go. But yeah, today is a biting back. Dealing substantial amounts of damage. What will high explosive do? Partial. Sets a few fires. Destroyed main gun. Very nice. Floodings, that's what I was looking for. I was hoping to rip open the hull with the main armament. But I think it's not actually the main armament. I think it's the secondaries doing it. These heavy cruisers perform very, very, very well. I think having 8 or 9 inch guns on a heavy cruiser is generally the right call. Because they can just very easily destroy almost any target. With the exception, of course, of enemy battle cruisers and heavy... Uh, enemy battle cruisers and battleships. That's fine. You... You already torped me. I just don't know when. Is that how it's going to be? Maria Teresa with a good turning circle doesn't care about your puny torpedoes. Oh, look at this guy. Healing himself up. 20% buoyancy. Go on. 26% buoyancy. Let's give him the good news. Port torpedo launcher, if they're still functioning. Wow. Port torpedo launcher away. Oh, Jesus, you're close. Can you damage me at all? Not really. I love how the ship is firing port on the light cruiser, starboard against the destroyer. And is winning against the destroyer. Main tower looks a bit worse for wear, but should be surviving. Look at this. That destroyer is getting hit hard. Two to one. Doesn't matter for the Maria Teresa. She doesn't care about your two versus one. She will kill both. Let me guess. You dodged the torpedoes? Yeah, you did. That's one. Now the very other one. If I would have lost the heavy cruiser, it was 80... 61 million. This light cruiser of theirs is 52 million. Their destroyers, I think, were 13. So even if I had a draw, in the sense that I would have lost the heavy cruiser, and they would have lost both of their ships, it would still have been a positive outcome for me. Although, they can recoup their ships faster. They can build new ones faster. Speaking of, how many ships are they building currently? Not how many ships they have, but what are they building? Well, I cannot see what they're building, really. I cannot see what they're building, but I kind of see how many they're building. The Austro-Hungarian Navy, building eight ships, repairing 10, active fleet 48, in two task forces. The Germans are building 23 new ships. The British, with their massive fleet of 107 ships. Jesus. Not far behind with the French, by the way, at 80 ships. And I'm just lagging behind with my 33, but I have ships coming up. Some are repairing, some are being built. Another seven months for heavy cruisers. The San Gennaro coming out in 12 months. And I believe that the light cruisers, there we go, coming in a couple of months. Just three. All right, any quick convoy mission that I can do? That's looking like it's going to be longer. Uh, yeah, let's just have the Regina go at it again, shall we? Coastal defense. Another one of our convoys is at risk. Regina reinforcing. Sorry, this is not a convoy. This is a single ship, the Nettuno. 
Load the high explosive and prepare for combat. What are you even trying to hit? Is that just a warning salvo or something? What was that? Netuno is going to turn that way. I'm going to turn the Regina to starboard, making sure that she attracts the torpedoes so that the transport does not. Oh, wow. Unexpected. But the Regina hit something at this range. Let's already commence some slowdown. I don't want to rush in there at 40 knots because it means my turning circle is going to be dramatic. So let's hit these guys up. And yeah, I think light cruisers first, destroyer second. Switch to semi armor piercing. In this case, that might be the better option. Because these things only do partial pens. What are you doing? Maintain pressure on the light cruiser. Range is 11.5. Chance to hit, 9%. That hits, you're going to have a problem. I'm getting a bit too close. Secondary is on this. Are you guys done vaping? No. Still working on it. Go on. Nope. Sadly not. <laughs> The destroyers are all running out of torpedoes. Yeah. Current speed, 37.9. Oh, come on. Just want to wait until identification. I want to confirm that they're all empty. So that I can then push the Regina into close range warfare. That's going to hit. Oh! That was the semi armor piercing. That was it. I don't like those. You're out. You're out. You're out because an 18 inch shell hit you. You still have torps. You still have torps. Okay. Uh, start return. I think semi armor piercing is going to be massive overkill against the DD, but I want to see what it does. For science, you know? Ah, the D7 just launched her salvo. At least the 17 with two torpedoes. Nope, she just launched those as well. Okay. I'm not sure if you're trying to hit the 33 or the 41, but you didn't really succeed in either. Detected their torpedoes. Probably, yeah, traveling entirely the wrong way. Because the AI doesn't know how to compensate for a turn. Perfect. Closest target. No, I still want to see what semi armor piercing can do. What the hell? Doesn't even look like you're trying to hit the right target anymore. Secondary's on the D41. Main's on the D41, actually. Damage to the main gun. How the fuck did you do that? This has happened before. The main guns are some of the most heavily protected parts of the ship, with 18 inches of armor. They cannot possibly pen that. Wow. Rudder damaged. Switch to the D7. By the time the guns are loaded, we should have them on target. I'm going to sit back and enjoy my range a bit more, because this is getting a bit too close for comfort. The Regina is starting to take more damage than she reasonably should. Just hit this thing up with a 50, uh, oh, sorry, with an 18 incher. And we'll finish off the D7 with the secondaries. More damage to the main guns? Old main guns have taken damage? How? 
I don't get how they're able to do that much damage against those guns. Is a 4-inch gun, at best, can pen 8.4 inches of armor with an AP shell. Not something like this. This is 18 inches, unless you hit them on the top. But that means they effectively have a mortar at 3.9 kilometer range. Because then they would hit the top armor of the turret. Which is still 18, oh, sorry, 8.2 inches of armor plus 118%. Oh. Yeah, that'll uh, be fairly disastrous. Next, just wrap this up. We've taken out quite a few of their destroyers and light cruisers this episode, so I think the next episode could involve dealing with some of their battleships. At least I would love to see those, because that's where their power projection is. And at the moment, I'm not really seeing their ships. Their battleships, anyway. I've seen some encounters. But probably because they took so much damage in a previous encounter. Not necessarily with me, but with the French. They're all in dock. They're all being repaired. Come on, Regina. Just do it once again, shall we? Once more. Props to the Sharf Shits D33 for not running away. Ready, ready, ready. Fire. Missed all but one shell. I was hoping for an extensive fire. But no such thing yet. <laughs> Three and a half kilometer range. Targets in smoke. I just don't hit it. Come on. I want to see what the semi piercing does. Hit it. Go. Boom. Miss. Miss. Maybe one hit. Flooding. Ah, uh, that did it. Oh, really? That thing was flooding so fast. And then when it comes to 1%, it just stops. What the hell? Oh, well. Job done. Ship eliminated. Moving on. So, how many ships do they have left of the smaller category? Because I think it's not that many. They have 13 DDs and 8 light cruisers. Early on in the campaign, they had so much more. So much more. Power projection, I think it's updated monthly, so it's not getting updated that much. But then again, I'm trying to project power with two battle cruisers and a heavy. Uh, the smaller ships essentially don't do that much, sadly. Anyway, that'll be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Let me know what your thoughts are down below, and I'll see you soon for the next. See you guys then.